I met Peter Milan years ago at the SHOT Show, and since then we've struck up quite the friendship even though we're separated by about 10,000 miles. I've been amazed by Pete's hunting, his amazing adventures in South Africa, and recently brought Pete over to the United States to Ultimate Reloader to be a part of the Rock Chuck Olympics. Now it was my turn to experience Pete's world. I had already hunted North America, taking a black bear, a deer, and various other animals. I was hoping hunting South Africa would take things to the next level. I was not disappointed. From where we live, getting to South Africa is no easy task. We had three different flights, navigated halfway around the world, ended up below the equator and nine hours ahead in time. My wife and I spent a few days in Cape Town and then Hermanus and were absolutely floored with the quality of the food and the sightseeing. I especially enjoyed driving in South Africa, a different experience on the wrong side of the road. And after about five hours of driving, we met up with Pete and his family about 30 minutes from the hunting lodge, Groot Sleutelfontein, or GSF for short. During this final stretch of our drive, we got a sneak peek of some African wildlife, which was exciting and made me really anticipate the hunt that would follow. When we rolled up to the lodge, we got a warm greeting from the staff, got out of our cars and took a look around. It was absolutely amazing. The lodge, swimming pool, and living quarters were immaculate and surrounded by wildlife. The next order of business was getting the rifle zeroed and validated. This 6.5 Sherman short rifle was put together by Pete with a Bat Bumblebee Action, International Barrels Carbon Wrapped Barrel, APW Braked Warbird Suppressor, and an MDT LSS chassis. We took some shots on small steel targets at 100, 200, and 300 meters to validate our shooting setup, to get some practice, and to make sure our dope was dead on. Ah, that got it going good. Can you see them hitting? Yeah. Just see them hitting? Yep. Okay, guy on. The next morning was near freezing, and after a wonderful breakfast, we headed out for a very cold bucky ride into the wilderness. In the first 10 minutes of driving, we rolled up on an entire herd of giraffe out in the wild. It was absolutely amazing to see these animals outside of captivity. While driving, our guide, AJ, and Pete were constantly looking for animals, and it did not take long to sight an entire herd of kudu. So we stopped the vehicle, got out, and started the stock. Our hike started in the open and eventually descended into a dry riverbed where we hiked for quite a ways. The strategy? To take a downwind loop around the herd of kudu and come up from the side where they wouldn't detect us. Along the way, we sighted several exotic African animals, including a golden wildebeest. I had the option to upgrade my hunting package on the spot, but I decided these animals were too rich for my blood. Just when we were about to round the corner, we heard the herd of kudu run away. My heart absolutely dropped. Yeah, you'll see in the middle of the of the hoof of the animal. There's this little ridge yeah. where the ground makes. The softer that ridge is, the fresher the track is. Because if that track was from, let's say, three days ago, the ground would have felt like this hard. So the softer, you understand? So the, the softer that little middle part is, the fresher the track is. Right. Cool. As soon as we started greasing that mountain little ridge, there was some kudu coming out, out of nowhere and just busting the hell out of us. So we went a little bit further down that, up the mountain and we're now looking over. There's a herd of impala lying down in front of us, as well as a springbuck ram there. Kevin, the way he's standing now, yeah, you can see his left shoulder. Yeah, his left shoulder for us is the right one. You see that white part that's connected to its neck? Yeah, you can take him right there. Right on the, on the uh, curvature of the shoulder? Yeah. It's a good shot. So 
so I did good. It just disappeared beneath a little. Yeah, by the bush. Yeah, so. The springbok hunt was very exciting and the hunt went just as planned. I hit the animal exactly on the front shoulder where AJ told me to and death came quickly. But the excitement didn't stop there. Within a few moments, Pete spotted an impala just to the left of where I shot the springbok. That hit very good. He's not going anywhere with that. Oh, wow. He is not going anywhere. <laughs> Two. Well done. Two for Two for The Impala shot also landed exactly where I wanted it to, and the Impala was alive for mere seconds. Perfection. That was, that was great. great. That was so good. You hit him straight right here. Nice. This guy makes it easy. Yeah. That's two animals within a minute. If it was a minute. If it was even a minute. That was, that was amazing. You talk about an exotic hunting yeah. experience. Saw the springbok. He put a perfect shot in him. We walked five meters, ten meters, and boom, there's the impala. So this 6'5 Sherman shorts pretty, pretty awesome. This thing hits hard, eh? Yeah. It hits hard. Well done, eh? Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you for the excellent spotting. Yeah, pleasure. All right. Let's go find that spring. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, here it is, Gavin. And yeah, well done. Thank eh? you, sir. Thank it's, you. An, it's a gorgeous spring back, and the shot went perfect. So the, the thing about hunting for me is you never know what's going to happen. But I think as soon as we saw him and he gave us a broadside shot and I asked you, Gavin, <laughs> do you want to take a go? Did you, there was no hesitation in you. Held right where you told me to on his shoulder and, and uh, yeah, very very steady, uh, you know, 220 meters yeah, was it? Yeah, Something I think like it was about 220, yeah, I think yeah. that's about on the number. Just, and with the, the break on the warbird, it was very easy to see. Uh, what well, happened afterwards, which yeah. is, is is really good. <laughs> that's always that's always nice that having that confirmation of that you know that you saw where that shot hit, you mm -hmm. got the impact, and you made a great shot on Thank your you. first African animal. From here, it can only get better. Absolutely, it's been it's been great. Your tracking skills are are amazing, and I feel like I'm just learning here. Thanks, man. So yeah, so you're incredibly lucky to have shot that guy, <laughs> and the um, impala somehow didn't run away mm -hmm. and I found that over the years of hunting with silences not only it's obviously not hearing safe we know that right the, the rifle is still way over the speed of sound right but it confuses the animals enough where they know something's wrong but they're not quite sure from which direction it has come and I mean perfect broadside shot yep 45 seconds after you shot the spring bar crazy this is something that usually only happens in Africa <laughs> um, and why it's so much fun to hunt here. Yeah, every day is an adventure. You don't know yeah. what you're going to see and when, and this happened pretty quick. I mean, obviously the blood looks quite rough, right. but it's over. This guy was down and dead within 20 seconds. Yeah. And he's perfect. Wow. Perfect shot. Dude, congratulations on your first Impala. So amazing. Thanks, fella. I always find after hunting that I get this sort of, it's weird to explain, like a tranquility type mm -hmm. of sense, of like, it's like a weird, it's like happiness and relief combined. Mm -hmm. And I found with bow hunting, it's, it's like 10 times more. And I can see how guys get addicted yeah. to that feeling. It's, right. it's pretty surreal. To it's, congrats a, again. It's, it's a circle of life thing, yeah. right? This is a part of the meaning of life to me right here. And a lot of people aren't comfortable with it, but mm. to me, it's um, it's a part of our purpose. Then I will take you through the initiation phase of hunting in South Africa, which is something everybody does on their first trip to South Africa. But don't worry, we'll do it the nice way. <laughs> As a new hunter on the African continent, there was a very important ritual I would need to take part in. This is part of shooting your first animal in South Africa. Mm -hmm. We eat a small piece of liver. Some people take this way over the top and you get a tiny little bit of face paint, which mm -hmm. you can wash off when you get to the lodge this evening. So I'll give you a little bit of face paint. Okay. 
Perfect. I think that's good. And then a small snack. <coughs> Congrats on your first animals. It's not that bad. Well done, dude. Yeah. Great shooting. Both p shots were absolutely perfect. And uh, congratulations, you're officially an African hunter. <laughs> well, done. well done. Good stuff. And well done for your great yeah. guiding, Alice. Awesome. What an absolutely outstanding morning of hunting. After a great lunch, we set back out this time with the goal of finding an oryx, also known as Gemsbuck. After driving miles and miles in the Land Cruiser, AJ spotted a herd of oryx in the distance. We stopped the vehicle, hiked a short distance, and set up. Everything was lined up properly. I had dialed my dope and I was on the animal. We confirmed which one it was and my shot was off before we even started recording with a side cam. Down. The orcs dropped just where it was standing, didn't move an inch and died moments later. In my next video in this series, I'll cover my full day hunt for a kudu bull but before that, I want to fast forward to the third day where I took another spring bug. This was perhaps the fastest hunt of all. We weren't but 10 minutes into the drive when we spotted a herd of spring bug in the morning sun. We stopped the bucky, got out, hiked a very short distance, set up on the tripod, and it all happened super fast. Ah! It's gonna turn. Okay, there we go. Easy money. <laughs> Dude, another fantastic shot, Gavin. Did you hear that? It had a good thump on it, Oh, yeah. Straight from the runway. The first day of my South African hunt was an absolutely amazing experience. It all went by really quickly and was very efficient. But day two of this hunt would be an entirely different experience hunting for this kudu bull. Make sure and watch that video.